because once you begin to once you begin to trust, once you begin to to, um, to see that love is everything, it's absolutely everything. Like Leo Tolstoy said, mm -hmm. said perfect love is not of this world, but we can by transcending the world, by seeing that the world is an illusion and we don't take it seriously, then we actually develop that compassion and understanding where we begin to loosen up our separation and begin to feel more our oneness. And the more we feel our oneness, the greatest the glory, the greatest the bliss and the peace and the joy that will come to us, which is our divine right, which is who we are. So everything goes into, into that balance. So when things happen to you, it because you have created them in your mind, you know, and um, for example, take um, the Course in Miracles talks a lot about unconscious guilt, and he says that when we practice forgiveness, what we are actually doing is forgiving our guilt that we carry with us. The guilt is in everybody who hasn't realized their true nature. Everybody feels guilty. Guilt is, is uh, but it's unconscious. You know, you feel discomfort sometimes. You feel as if you're missing something. You feel as if you're not good enough. You feel as if there's something wrong with you. You know, you don't, you don't feel confident. Um, you know, there's discomfort, self-consciousness. Now, that, that is all unconscious guilt. The feeling that something is wrong with you. When you begin to forgive, then that very forgiveness itself, you see, will, will chop away at that guilt. And every time, a little bit that you chop, increases the, the love in your life, the beauty in your life, the, uh, the oneness in life. See, many people think that, that spirituality is something that you practice by going to church and kneeling and praying and doing rituals. Well, these are fine, these are good, these are okay, but it's not what you do. You see, the real spirituality is all done inside. You see, how much love do you feel? If you're walking down the street, are you judging people? Every time you judge, you can go to church every day, all day. It won't make a difference. If you are judging, you see, you are creating a separation. And whatever you judge, you, you, then you begin to suffer from that same thing. You begin to create the same thing that you judged another for. So, so um, this is how I'd, I'd like to go into it. And maybe if you could share some of your feelings and uh, some experiences that you've had. People love it on the YouTube, incidentally, when, uh, when you talk. They say, oh, you know, what that person said is exactly how I felt. Because to hear Bert talking all the time is not much fun. It's nice to hear other ways. Well, I have <coughs> been moving around with this word forgiveness for a while mm -hmm. and trying to figure out how does that how does that apply in my life how do I apply that in my life it, yeah okay and uh, then somehow I came across something that seemed to help a little bit and it was when I was able to change the word forgiveness to I am forgiving love to you. I, you know, in other words, I am whatever it is or whatever happened, I am forgiving love to this instance, this mm -hmm. particular okay. so situation. You're, you're, you're finished, that you're was my love. internal dialogue, which mm -hmm. I found and I do at times still mm -hmm. find helpful to change the, because I couldn't figure out forgiveness. What is that? You know, what am I supposed to do with that? How, do, mm -hmm. how does that work? Mm -hmm. And, um, <clears throat> I just want to say that to some extent it has brought me comfort to say I am forgiving you. Mm -hmm. And that's how that came about for okay. me. 
or this situation. This is very good. So let's let's all discuss how do you see forgiveness? How do you practice it? What do you do? Tell me. I see I see anything that disturbs me as your call for love. So I see that. It's a call for love. You. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. In whatever that could be. Yeah. Reaction and the moment you see the thing that you made real isn't real, it's all created by you because of some need, in other words. Yeah, then that I can look at forgiven. that. That's right. In whatever way I need to. Yeah. Remember, you cannot forgive something if you think it is real. Mm -hmm. See, there's another thing, too, what we're talking about. Anything that you make real in the world, I know this is a big one, you know, uh, but <laughs> you come to recognize that this is true. Anything that you make real in the world will own you. Anything. Let's say you make money real. Now money is energy. But let's say you make it real. I've got so much in the bank. It will own you. You hate spending, you hate giving, whatever, you become greedy, you become that. It will own you. Anything that you make real, it doesn't matter what that is. If you get married, I own my husband, I own my wife. The marriage is not going to last. It's going to get boring, it's going to get, you know, you go by, by traditional means. See, a love, a love relationship is a very flowing thing. No expectations, no demands, no conditions. You are you and I am I and we're one, you know, we get along fine. We just feel that, that, that relationship, you see. When you, when you begin to feel one with another, that's love. But the, the moment any separation starts to take place, that separation now means I need to forgive it. And how do you forgive it? It's not what you do. Forgiving is not a doing. Forgiving is seeing that separation doesn't exist. It never did. When you say separation, then, it seems like it, the separation wants to pull it together. You know, like yes. you're talking about relationships. Like The more you separate, the more you want to pull together almost, or fight to, to be one. In, in what way do, can you... Uh, well, I guess, or the, the arguments start, or, you know, the, the friction, let's say, in a relationship. Right. Why do fights start in relationships? Well, there is no freedom. It, it's, like the, it's like I'm saying, that need That's to be together. That's very true. There is no freedom. And you're trying to be right. You see? And you want to be right. But, you see, nobody is right when there is an argument. Yeah. When there, is, when there is a quarrel, nobody is right. Even though the facts might back you up, and in the court of law you might win, but that's not the important thing. If, it, if it's making you unhappy, then you are not right. I know for myself that, uh, that I would fight to be right, or need to be right, because I saw it as a way of, of attaining or becoming the perfect me. So I had this idea, a fuzzy idea, of who I needed to be. And, and so in order to be perfect, it meant that I had to be right all the time. So right. I had to be right yeah. because I need to be perfect. And, and why did I need to be perfect? Yeah. I need to be perfect because yeah. that's when I, f I, I had this belief that that's when I would be worthy of love. Uh -huh. So yeah. then I began to see how my need to control things, my need to be right, all stemmed from this idea that I needed to be perfect in order to be loved. That's beautiful. <laughs> that's very good. And that's why we have this need to be right, because sometimes we think we're going to gain more love through it. You're going to respect me more. You're going to see how grand I am, how, how intelligent and bright I am. Right. And it is that very thing that creates the separation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this mm -hmm. thing about guilt mm -hmm. was when I couldn't measure up, then I, of course I would, I would judge myself as failing. Mm -hmm. And then I would feel shame around that. 
that I'm I'm not I'm not good, I'm not good enough. Uh -huh. Which then end up and the shame would block me from actually being able to see things as they are. Right. And block me from changing. Mm -hmm. See, that's the vicious circle of the, this ego thing that we think when, when there is any personal at all need, whatever, the slightest need, we're always needing love. And when we start doing things because we need love, then becomes hate. You see? So big, that's the duality. Whenever we start to need love, then we get the opposite. And that's how also relationship starts to uh, break up. I need you to love me so that I can feel good about myself. But then, you see, and the other person is saying the same thing. We're needing each other, nobody's doing any loving. <laughs> <laughs> we, they're just trying to go back to when it first began, mm -hmm. right? And they thought it was yeah. the other person giving them the fix. Right, right. The love yeah. fix. So you don't really love another, do you? No, you don't. Right. Mm -hmm. So what happens then when you, when you feel that love? Within, you mean? Is that what you mean? You're, you're, you're yeah. Asking? When you feel love with someone, are you really loving them? No. So what is happening then? You're, you're just, how do you say, expanding in, in the place that they're giving you to be. Yeah, when you, yeah, that's right. when you, you, when you meet someone um, who is in congruence with you, what is the word, in, um, in resonance with you? Yeah, resonance. Mm -hmm. You see, your heart expands, you feel loved. You know, there's no contradiction, there's no need to be right, there's no way how to be or how to act. You can be totally yourself, you feel so free, and you feel that love growing when you're with them, you see. Now, if the other person feels the same way when you're together, then there aren't two of you anymore. You see? <coughs> just, just like the uh, spiritual arithmetic that I always say, you know, one plus one makes one. You see? So that's, that's what love is, a oneness. But, and you can so actually have that relationship with yourself. I mean, yes. you actually are. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Is that, that would be because in oneness there are no others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are no others, there are no people, there is no world. Like there I get so excited things. like that sometimes, it's like, oh shit, I wish I had someone I could just really love that same way, like someone real. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but going back to what, what we were saying earlier about um, um, having to, having certain patterns that we're following in our in our lives for you know whatever it is that we have to learn <clears throat> and meeting the other person with whom we can pursue that pattern was <laughs> the, the the right kind of pattern that lets us pursue the pattern that we're that we're in right now uh, is that. I, I would suspect that's got a lot to do with with people coming together in, in a in a what in a human human yes, version of yes. a love relationship. See, there's yes, the love relationship. For example, uh, remember I was talking about um, about a type of person who are brought up with very loving parents, but very controlling, and they are very on the outside. They're very sweet, and they're always you know. Do you know what, this type of people are very nice, you know, but whatever they feel inside, they will never tell you. <laughs> they will never tell you how they feel because they're afraid to make waves. They're afraid they won't be approved of. So, but you know the people that they get attracted to? The very opposite. More emotional people. Emotional people that are in your face. They get attracted to that type of person. Until they, they this, this is, was that? <laughs> until they get over it. <laughs> yeah, until well, the day the relationship doesn't usually last in that type of situation. But you see, because we have a certain need, and that certain need becomes sexual. Um, how shall I put it? Um, let's say you're a very uh, quiet, timid person. Um, 
you're not outgoing, but somehow or other inside you wish you were. So, so you get attracted to someone who's more the type that you are not. You know what I mean? It's not that opposites attract, but, but you, you get attracted to that person and to you they are sexually appealing. You see, in the same way, a person who's very nice but very keeps things very laid back, very quiet. Okay, they get attracted to a woman who's extremely emotional, and to to them, this is very sexual. It's the pieces in you that you yearn for so deeply. They are the pieces when in you that you yearn yeah. for, right? Exactly. Again, it's, isn't, it sounds like it's just calling for oneness. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. you know the yes. yang, the yeah. Anima, we see, we're seeing, the, we're seeing the seeing the picture all the time, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's all, all the time, just like you, you said. Everything is 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 longing for love. You see, mm -hmm. reaching towards love, and we do it the best way that we think is going to help us. But of course, it doesn't unless we learn where we're coming from. So even in our our times today, how relationships don't last too long. No. As long as they used to. <laughs> well, they, they used to, like, <laughs> um, my, my father met my mother and she was only 15 at the time. And her father took a, took a gun to him, to my father. But anyway, that's, that's another story. But you know, the moment they met, they felt that attraction. It never left them for 65 years. Wow. They were married all their lives and they were very happy. I, my wow. parents were they're just wonderful, really. And, uh, and they loved each other mm -hmm. tremendously. You know, I've never known them wow. to fight. So, so I, had, uh, I had a lot of uh, idealism that uh, relationships are going to work the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but now I find it quite rare to see a couple after six months or a year still getting along well. You know, it's quite rare. Unless, and this is a word I'd like to use, okay, unless they put the Holy Spirit in their life. Mm -hmm. See, I'd like to mention this, okay? The Holy Spirit is the I am of you. All right? You, you, you are this, it's whole, holy and it's spirit and you can create a relationship with this the beautiful thing about holy relationship and it's the way it's explained in the course is that it understands the human condition even though it's working on a highest highest level of I am of the oneness so whenever you begin to trust it whenever you bring it into your life and place everything to it then it, it seems to start guiding you giving you hints. Like when, when uh, satsang is about to happen, I, I talk to the Holy Spirit and I says, okay, you tell me what I should be talking about. And then something happens, somebody asks a question or something, and says, that's what you talk about. And then I take it in, I write it down, and uh, I have a lot of recorders, I have six. <laughs> <laughs> And I take them with me everywhere because I never know when the Holy Spirit is going to be talking to me. And uh, the moment I decide on a subject, and I said I'd like to know a bit more about it, more in depth ways, and it starts to come. Mm -hmm. So this is one thing that I, that I can never tell you enough. Okay, always make friends with the I am of you. Let's do it now. Let's do it now. Okay, I'd like you to be uh, as relaxed as possible, your back straight, head erect, okay? Keep your feet planted, feet flat. Mm -hmm. Keep them like that, flat. Yeah. Okay, so you make contact, right. Okay, now keep your eyes closed. Take a very deep breath from the diaphragm and sigh ah. and let go totally, totally let go. Okay, two more, take another deep breath. Exhale. 
exhale. And you're letting go completely. Now focus on the spot between the eyebrows. Raise your eyes about 20%. Not to the point where they're strained, but it's as if you're looking inside your head. Okay, and you've taken your last breath, you've exhaled, and you're totally here now. Now, very still, very relaxed. You are walking along a corridor, a long corridor, and in front of you, you see a door. And this is all imagination, don't forget, it's all mind. But it's wonderful because it brings the law of attraction. Now, when the door opens, you're going to meet your teacher, the I Am. It's as if you're entering a different dimension. Now you're approaching the door. You're walking along. You're approaching the door. Now you grab the door and open it. As soon as you open the door, you see the I Am, the Holy Spirit. And it looks exactly like you. Like when you look in the mirror. It's exactly like you. Perfectly. The only difference is that the face you're seeing now has forgiven the past completely. In fact, it has forgiven it so completely it has even forgotten it. And it's totally living here now. You look into those eyes and those eyes are beautiful radiant, pure. And they don't even have to say anything to you. Because as you look into those eyes that are full of joy and radiance, you know the answer is in them. Now you look at this being and right now you ask it a question. You don't receive a verbal answer, but you look into the eyes that are always here and always now and always radiant, living in joy. And this I am is eternal, never changing. And as you look into its eyes, You receive your answer. A feeling knowing comes from looking at those eyes. This is your teacher, the I am of you. Okay, you've asked it a question. Now open your eyes. Now we did it very fast, but if you do it very often, it can bring in magic in your life. Did you ask it a question and receive an answer? Yes. Hmm? Can, can, can you share it? Well, I, 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 <laughs> I, I did see kind of me, but it was, it was really, it was radiant and it was uh, completely, um, um, I mean, I, and I've, 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 I've met this entity, entity before uh, as a kind of Wonderful. special divine friend and, um, and, and what I asked um, that that higher self had actually forgotten all about the past, and of course the past is where these things got started. And I I asked it really if it's 
I didn't ask if it's the time. I asked if if, if it's possible for me to um, to now fully fully trust and, and fully um, <clears throat> um, allow uh, myself to be completely visible on an emotional level. Mm -hmm. You know, it's something I've been ratcheting upwards to for quite some little time now. Um, and it, it all goes back to some things that happened in my childhood. Um, that's how it started, <clears throat> I think. And, and it's like, it's taken a long time, but I think I'm finally ready to let go of the past. Yeah. And uh, I've been, as I said, I've been ratcheting it up to it lately in my, in my everyday life. Mm -hmm. And so I asked, and, and the answer was just fantastic, yes. It's, it wasn't just yes, it was... Uh, there's a flow of energy that, that, that said, of course, you know, now is the time, and yes, it, it's all, like the past was not just walled off, but as you, say, as you, you suggested, actually disappeared. It, there is no past. Yeah. It wasn't like, okay, I see a wall, I'm safe from it. it it's not there now. So, wonderful, yeah. wonderful. In the past I've seen uh -huh. it walled off, you know. And you know how simple it is and what you've done. And this is what starts to happen. You can do it anytime, anywhere. You get in touch with the I am that you are. And it talks to you and you get messages. And they're always correct, always right. Because everything is okay to the I am. The I am <laughs> is always, everything is okay. It doesn't judge you. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't do anything. It's always showering you with love. And you begin to see what? My God, that's who I am, really. You see? And when that starts coming to you, see, we, we are using the law of attraction here, we're using imagination, but does it work? Oh, yes, it does. Definitely it does. Now, there is a course on the Internet. Uh, he's a friend of mine. I've known him for many years, and he's given up this course, and it's called uh, uh, Take a Giant Leap. <laughs> something like that, and uh, it, he charges $200, but this is all he does, <laughs> you know, he called it uh, Google, um, do, 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 double kung, double ganger. <laughs> doppelganger, doppelganger, yeah. doppelganger, yeah, yeah, <coughs> and to create an I am as the, as the Holy Spirit itself, which you are, and uh, start, start communicating with it. And you forget yourself totally. You as an ego die. And the I am just takes over your life. And God, you know, if I knew that when I was younger, because I had a terrible, you know, young years. But, but now, I, I, don't, I kid you not, I live in joy all the time. And I, I am in such connection with this Holy Spirit. And I'd like to shout it from the rooftops. You know, get in touch with this energy. Make make it your friend, <clears throat> and anything you want to know, anything at all. You, you did a, a a good job with kind of building the suspense, so you know, swinging the door open. Yeah. So yeah. The, the question that I, as I looked at my doppelganger, the only question I could ask was, what should we do now? What should we do? What did you get? Uh, we're doing it. <laughs> with kind of this Good. kind of playful Good. glint. Because it's always now. You see, it cannot fail. <laughs> you look into those radiant eyes which are perfect, which are, everything is okay. It's all love. And it's always going to give you the right answer. And then you wonder how your mind always wants something else. But, you know? Yeah. Or, or think, you, think yeah. that something has to be done. My question is, what should I do about... And the answer was, there's nothing to do. There's nothing, there's nothing to, do. to do. There yeah. is nothing to do. Yeah. 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 There's nothing to do. Because it, it isn't real anyway. No. It's just nothing that's, is that's real. Why, <laughs> nothing. That's why the higher self can. Yeah. The only thing that's that, real is spirit. Real. Is yeah. spirit. Mm -hmm. This is it. You know, when you realize that nothing is real, you feel a joy and a, and, a, and excitement you never thought was possible. You begin to feel a freedom you never knew was there, because things in the world don't bother you anymore.
But that doesn't mean you take you don't take responsibility and not pay taxes or things like that. You still do them, but you do them in, in joy. You do them in with a humor. You don't humor take it seriously. Word, yeah. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. is that? Humor is the word. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You don't take anything seriously because nothing, nothing, is worth being serious about. I don't mean not being interested in or passionate about. I meant you know taking it serious. You know. Right. <laughs> yeah. I think for me, I I asked um, where where do I go from here, or, or what do I need to do, and yet I know that it's not about doing. But as soon as I looked into these eyes, um, they were so radiant, so pure that the 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 answer was right there. It said, "Be the love that you are." Oh, that's beautiful. And I really See. felt that love. Coming yeah. From the oh, eyes. I really. really felt it. Yeah. 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 Do this often. It only takes a few minutes to do it, you see? Mm -hmm. And once you've done it for a couple of months, it becomes a pattern, you see? And you get up in the morning with it, you go to bed <coughs> with it, you eat with it, you do everything with it, you'll never feel alone anymore. It's just wonderful, really. <laughs> it's pretty amazing, yeah. Oh yeah, the, the, the simplicity. See, people make something so incredible, like take A Course in Miracles, something that I absolutely respect. Many people say it's too complicated, I don't like the language, it's too this, it's too that. Did you know that it has 1200 pages of saying nothing but the same thing page after page after page? <laughs> <laughs> And all it's talking about is love and forgiveness, mm -hmm. when we understand it. That's it. It does explain the ego and the game, just like you did such a beautiful job on wanting to be right. I mean, you, you did them really magnificent. Are you a writer? No. Yeah. Oh, okay. You're just, you're just good. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and the Course explains the ego like I've never known anything explain the ego. But but then it, it shows that, and then it keeps saying, but it doesn't really exist. Mm -hmm. It's just a play, you see? You know. So, love is, is just the, the essence of being. It's just the... Yeah, the, the essence vibration. of being is love, because it's not something, mm -hmm. you see? Like something, not, fear the, is something, guilt is something, depression is something, thinking negatively is something. Love is not something. Love is, just like God is. Mm. It's there, it's the very essence of you. So when there is no fear or guilt, you're in love. <laughs> Isn't that simple? <laughs> yeah. Fear and guilt comprise of all the negative qualities that ruin our lives, that make us take life very seriously, you see? Mm -hmm. So, um, now that we've, we've done this um, satsang, are you a little bit clearer about how the world is not real? Now, to that extent, you have found freedom and love. But if the world is still real, then the pattern, negative patterns will still keep repeating. So then, just in that, describe real. Real is that which never changes, never fluctuates, never comes and goes. It is. And that is called spirit. That's the real. Anything that comes and goes, just like the clouds across the sky. That, that, that's a good example. When the clouds gather, and they make the sun as if it's not there at all, and everything is dark and dismal. But is it really? The sun is always there. It's just that you're not seeing it because of so many clouds. But the clouds are not a reality. They come and go. The sky is always there. Because there's no such thing as sky. No, it's there is the space. Yeah. <laughs> right? We call it sky because it happens to be up there. Because the earth right now <laughs> is pointing that way. Right? But the earth, we feel solid. Did you know that the earth is hurtling through space at 20 miles per second? That's the speed of the Earth right now. And yet, you don't feel it because of gravity. But what is gravity? It is not something. 
See? It's the force. Of it's a force. Yeah. It's a force. But you see, nothing is anything. There's nothing. Even matter, the body itself, the body itself is not real. Now, here's a big one, okay? So don't take my words for it, but do your own inner, inner knowing. But the body is not real. Well, it's the just body, as real as it's, like this. It's an appearance, yeah. It's, it's matter, you see? But it's mind created. There is no inside or outside. There is no world out there. There's only mind. 